The second syndrome we'll be discussing is Vardenberg syndrome. Vardenberg syndrome is a condition characterized by localized areas of depigmented skin and hair. It again shows autosomal dominant inheritance and multiple types of genes have been described in various subforms of Vardenberg syndrome. So if you look at this child, this child is having a classic white forelock and additional findings if you can see there is a broad nasal bridge and there is increased gap between the eyes. This increased gap between the eyes is not exactly hypertelorism, it is more correctly called as telecanthus. In telecanthus, the gap between the medial cantha is more than normal, but one of the eyes usually is having some degree of strabismus. So, if you calculate the interpupillary distance, that is always normal. In case of uh, only the eyes getting moved away, which is hypertelorism, the interpupillary distance will also be increased. In these patients, one of the eyes is more towards the center. So, the interpupillary distance is normal, only the gap between the two canthi is more. We call it as telecanthus. So, when you find a patient of Vardenberg syndrome, uh, uh, syndrome, what are the things you will look for? You will look for white forelock and you will look for increased gap between the medial canthi. So, what are the types of Vardenberg syndrome? There are four types which have been described. The first type is uh, type 1 in which there are heterogeneous gene mutations in Pax3 gene. It is characterized by white forelock. Depigmented skin is present only in 15% cases. Dystopia canthorum that is telecanthus is present in all patients. I have already told you there is increased gap between the medial canthi of the two eyes. But IPD interpupillary distance is usually normal that is called as telecanthus. Technical name is dystopia canthorum. This is present in almost 100% of these patients. Unibrow, joined eyebrow, that is a single eyebrow connecting in the midline, it is technically called as synophilus, will be present in 17 to 69% patients. Deafness will be present in 9 to 37%. Heterochroma iridis will be present in 20% of these individuals. Then we have type 2, where there are MITF gene mutations. It is similar to type 1 except there is no telecanthus and deafness is found to be more common as compared to type 1. We have the third variety type 3 where there are Pax3 gene mutation homozygous variety. In type 1 it was heterozygous gene mutation. So it is also called as clean Vardenberg syndrome. The additional thing along with type 1 is that they will have limb abnormalities like limb contractures and hypoplastic limbs. And fourth is the type 4 variety in which three types of genes have been described. SOX10 gene, EDNRB gene and EDN3 gene. It is also called as Shah-Wardenburg. Type 3 is clean Wardenburg. Type 4 is Shah-Wardenburg syndrome. And it comprises type 1 Wardenburg syndrome features along with Hirschsprung's disease. And this is your old MCQ. Hirschsprung disease present in which variety of Wardenburg syndrome? So you can remember it is an MCQ point. And remember that telecanthus is only seldom seen in type 4 variety.